All right, so we should be recording now and everything. Thank you everyone for signing up and attending our webinar today. I'm really excited. Also a big thank you to Amber. She really spearheaded organizing the webinar and getting that information out to everyone. So thanks Amber for all you do. We appreciate you. And thank you so much to Emily also for agreeing to visit with us today. I think with this is our first webinar of the winter months and we're just really excited to be kicking things off with Emily. I'm excited because I think what she's going to be talking about is really just interesting and I think a fun, potentially a fun way for soil conservation districts to utilize this tool and this resource to share about the great work that they're doing in a really visually and engaging way. Uh, so with that being said, I'm going to uh, introduce Emily, who many of us know, but Emily is the Nonpoint Source Pollution Management Program Coordinator with the North Dakota Department of Environmental Quality. Emily was introduced to ArcGIS Story Maps in 2021 through the department's harmful algae bloom moderate monitoring program. An older unsupported version of story maps was being utilized to map and inform the public on water bodies where um, advisories and warnings were present. Seeing the need for an update, Emily began transitioning the department's HAB's content to the new story map format. Finding great ease in developing that resource and seeing the potential for this tool went beyond HABs, she has since developed a story map for non-point source program reporting. She is here today to present on her work with story maps and demonstrate the capabilities of this tool. So with that being said, thank you again, Emily. We will let you take front and center stage. And I would also just as a reminder to everyone, if you have questions for Emily, put them in the chat. Um, if you I'm, not, I'm sure she'll take a moment to unmute and there'll be time for um, some Q&A and everything, but pop those questions in the chat. Feel free to unmute, um, raise your hand with that emotion or like emoji option for you and just engage. I think it's not often that you get to have somebody that is as knowledgeable about this stuff as Emily is and we appreciate her. So take it away, Emily. Well, thanks, Hannah really uh, making me feel good about myself today. Um, like Hannah said, my name is Emily Novak. Um, I'm with the Department of Environmental Quality. Um, and today I'm gonna be talking about ArcGIS story maps. So um, I would also say uh, I really like the opportunity to address questions kind of as we go, because part of my presentation today will be a little bit more demonstration based. So if I'm clicking through stuff a little bit too fast or um, there's something that you see that you want a little bit more information on as we go, like feel free to unmute, flag me down. Um, I think Hannah and Amber will do a good job keeping an eye on the chat and everything that um, we'll be able to get things addressed kind of on the fly. So happy to take questions whenever, um, but there will be time at the end if you want to save them. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. All right, everybody see that all right, hopefully? Perfect, I got thumbs up from Hannah, so, okay. So today we're gonna be talking about ArcGIS story maps, um, which are holistically just an innovative way to tell stories about what you're doing and also share data. So to get into it a little bit, I would just like to get an idea of what everybody's familiarity is with ArcGIS Story Maps. So if you could utilize your React functions to kind of throw up there. Um, if you are very familiar, throw a heart. If you've heard about them but want to learn some more, and that's why you're here today, some clappy hands, um, thumbs up. If you're brand new to this information and Hannah's um, notice was... Uh, the first you'd ever heard of story maps in general. I'm going to stop sharing so I can see all the cool little reacts and stuff. Okay, so some people familiar, it looks like. And some other folks. Okay. 
It looks like most of the folks that were able to to react there were kind of in this middle, like you've heard of them before, want to see what capabilities they might have for your operations, um, which is great, um, great start for us today. Um, for those that maybe have never heard of or are brand new to Story Maps, I'm going to do my absolute best to give you kind of a 10,000 foot overview um, with a little bit of detail and, and get you started. So, okay, for for the basics, what are story maps? And I had referenced they're that innovative storytelling tool. So it's a way, a digital way, I should say, that you are able to put together narrative text, maps, um, all sorts of media, videos, photos, in a way that is very accessible for the public to view. And on that first bullet, I put specifically today, I'm going to be talking about ArcGIS story maps. So I'll put a disclaimer out there that there is other forms of story maps. So if you just Google story maps, um, you're gonna get a bunch of different websites where you can build tools that are similar to what I'm going to show today, um, but I'm going to specifically highlight the ArcGIS version of story maps. So just know that if maybe you're limited by some of the stuff that I'm gonna talk about, um, specifically like the subscription side of things, there might be other options that are really similar to what I'm gonna talk about today that might get you what you want. As I said, this is a platform for sharing uh, narrative text maps. So if you are a soil conservation district or your entity utilizes maps um, or ArcGIS already to put together maps and you're familiar with that, this is a really neat tool of being able to incorporate that data into something that the public can view with ease. Um, also media, it's a great way to highlight things like videos, photos, um, audio clips. So if there's folks that do podcasts and you want to include little snippets from podcasts into these story maps, that's all functionality that you can do. Um, and your functionality is really determined on what sort of subscription you have. So that's kind of my disclaimer at the bottom. And I'm just going to highlight here. There are two different ways that you can access ArcGIS story maps. So the first one is from the creator or the GIS professional platform, and that is through a subscription. If you have an ArcGIS desktop or pro subscription, you automatically receive access to the ArcGIS online accounts where you can create story maps. So um, if that is something that your SCD is actively paying for, for you to have as a resource, you already have this tool at your disposal. It's just a matter of creating an account and popping in there to start using it. If it is not something that your SCD or your um, entity is paying for, um, or you don't have access to those resources, there are free versions of ArcGIS story maps that you can get. They just have a little bit more limited access to the different types of media that you can share through um, those particular story maps. So I stole this off the ArcGIS story maps uh, webpage, off of Esri's webpage. It just shows the difference in accessibility for the free account versus the subscription account that you would receive. So for example, on the public account, you're limited to some of the things you can share audio wise, but a lot of the immersive content, so creating and sharing um, imagery is all uh, something you can do. I'll kind of walk through some of that today. Um, the themes, are something that's a little bit more limited by the public account. So if you're an organization that has certain colors and branding guidelines that you want to be following, um, you would have to do that through the paid subscription account. It isn't something that you can freely set. They have um, predetermined themes that you can utilize. It's kind of like using the um, default design formats in PowerPoint. If you don't want to or can't design your own, you can always just click what they have available. And if that's good enough for you, then a free account is really all you would need in order to do this. So um, I will send my slides to Hannah and Amber after the meeting here and they can distribute those so folks can go back because I will have quite a few links moving forward that you guys can quick reference um, as you yourselves maybe jump into um, exploring and learning more about story maps. So um, some of the major perks to story maps is once again, they tell a story in an innovative way. And I feel like um, especially soil conservation districts and if there are other organizations on the line, um, we have a very unique 
placement in the world and having a platform to share our stories and create awareness for what we do in our communities is super crucial. And so we need to be able to share that content in a way that meets people where they're at. And so um, story maps are very flexible in the sense that they are a living document. Um, you can kind of envision it like a newsletter that you never have to print and can update on the fly constantly. And so I feel like every newsletter that I get always has some content that is the same. There might be links to web pages or different things that is always included in those newsletters. And then just kind of the meat and bones content changes. Well, that's what this is. You're able to go in and you can change that content on the fly, publish a new version of it, and there it's done. There's no printing, there's no mailing, it's a web resource. Um, and it's easily accessible in the sense that you can view it from a smartphone, a tablet, or a desktop. Um, the smartphone function, I think, has been really favorable for a lot of people because we always have our phones on us. And so for those folks that are out in the field looking for something to do, looking for something to read for a few minutes while the, the tractos, tractors on auto steer, um, this is something that they could pull up if you created it for your entity um, and sent it out in a link that people could access or post it on your Facebook page, a link that people could get to. Um, there's also other accessibility features that are built into ArcGIS Story Maps, um, including screen reading functionality. So it has the ability to go in and you can put text to what your photos show. So then if you have somebody who is screen reading, um, they're visually impaired, and so they're relying on an audio dictation of what that web page shows. Um, all of your content can have those descriptions included with them. So then that just becomes another layer of accessibility for folks um, in the world. Um, once again, I had mentioned the branding requirements. So for the state of North Dakota, we have very specific uh, colorations and fonts that we have to use when we publish. Um, referenceable documents. And so that is something we've been able to do. We set up um, the text font we need and the coloration that we need in order to meet those requirements when we publish story maps. All right, so my next point here is let's demo this. So let's jump into kind of showing off what I was talking about. So for those that have never seen an ArcGIS story map, um, I'm just going to quickly go into one here that I created as a test document for the sake of this presentation. And so um, what I did is I created a story map. I simply named it test story and added a cover photo to it. And then I published it. And so right now displaying, if I would send this link out to you all, this is what you would see um, for that story map. After I published it, I went in and I edited the story. And so on the back side, there's actually changes that I made that because I haven't published it to the general public yet, um, it's only viewable to me. So this is kind of the beauty of having these is you can update stuff as you go and you only publish when you're ready and everything's been checked over. It's not something that as you save, it's automatically published out there for the world to see. Um, so this is kind of what I was talking about where this might be an option for replacing a newsletter for some people or supplementing that. You know, there's still folks out there that really like to have their paper in hand um, and they might just be looking for something to supplement that or meet some of those younger farmers in the field. Um, this could be a really cool tool to be able to do that. So um, what I did is I just made some simple edits to the text that's in here. Uh, I added a new title. So the benefits of BMPs, creating environmental and financial resilience through best management practices. And then I added some content. Um, I went in and created a text box, which is really simple to do. There's these little plus icons that'll pop up on your page and you can pretty much select anything that you want to add at that point in your story map. So I just selected that I wanted to add an image um, and I ended up adding this image of a grassed waterway and decided that I wanted to have text beside it. So I changed where it was located on the screen and I can flip flop these, I can reorganize stuff. Um, I can drag and drop things where I want them. So if I wanna move the header somewhere else or farther up, if I wanna move my content down, I can. 
Um, I can rearrange things kind of on the fly as I go. So it's very, whoops. It's very easy to access, um, very easy to manipulate. It has all the functionality keys right at your fingertips for moving through this process. Um, you can add captions, like I was saying. This is what I was referencing. So if you go into the settings for the imagery and go into properties, this alternative text line, whatever description you add in here is what a screen reader would hear if they were using that functionality. So if I wanted to describe what's in this photo, um, so they're able to also participate in this media, um, knowing that there are some impairments as far as being able to view it. Um, it would also display whatever you put in this box if there were loading issues. So if you had some really large content that you shared in the story map, um, that if you had pretty limited cell service, you couldn't download that, it would also show up with this text to say, this is what should be in this location. And so it doesn't just kind of show up as a, a spinning box. It actually lets the individual know this can't be loaded this time, but this is what it is. Um, if you want to go back and reference it when you maybe have better signal or connected to Wi-Fi. And then with the images, there's a lot of just different things that you can, can do. Um, choose different fittings, um, add links, just a whole variety. I don't want to get way into the nitty gritty on some of this stuff because we could spend the entire day of me just kind of demoing the different fun things you can do in story maps. Um, but I will do one quick one here. Um, if you want to add something like say, an image gallery where you want to add a bunch of different photos from a project you did. So I want to showcase a bunch of BMPs that we've done through our non-point source program. And so I click those open and then it'll drop it right into the story map for me. And I can choose how I want them to be viewed. If I want it to be small and kind of fall in the middle of um, the screen, if I want it to be large and take up the full screen, you can kind of manipulate that. And then also you can change the order. You can move things around if you don't want, say I don't want two tanks next to each other, so I can move those into different locations. Um, and then you can also choose how it's shown. So if you want it to be um, more visually appealing and actually the size of the photos, so things don't look scrunched or distorted, you can do fun things like that. Um, add captions in here um, to describe those things. You can also add in what are called um, immersives, which are either this sidecar or a map tool, so or tour, excuse me. And so you can choose, and I won't, once again, spend a lot of time on this, but you can kind of choose, and you can always go back in and edit your, whichever one you choose. Um, but say you have something that you want to be able to display on a map. You had different locations that stuff happened at, or you wanted to plot different things, different, um, maybe where people came to attend a meeting, you had a couple different meetings across the county. And so you wanted to make it kind of a cool visual experience and drop little pins on um, the cafe was one of the meeting spots. And then um, Perry's shop was one of the meeting spots. And you, and you wanna make it something that's really kind of neat and immersive. Um, this is a tool that can do that. You can assign locations and utilize the mapping functions that are within story maps. So you don't have to be an expert GIS operator. You can just utilize uh, the frameworks that are already here and you don't have to do anything um, overly um, complicated with the mapping side of things. I'll showcase this in a little bit different light with our harmful algal bloom story map. I'll kind of give an example of that in just a minute here. And then um, things are really easy to get rid of. So if you added this by accident and you don't want it in there, you can easily delete it out and start over, add different content. Um, like I said, these are all the functionalities that I have having the subscription version of ArcGIS Story Maps. So I added the gallery, I can add videos in, um, audios. If you wanna show before and after pictures of BMPs, I wish I had some of those that I could demonstrate that, that would be really cool, but you could use the school swipe function. Um, you can embed links, all sorts of different stuff. So it's just a really neat tool for being able to showcase any and all sorts of media. Um, and once everything's all said and done, you have kind of a cohesive project 
um, oops, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to publish what I did. Um, so then what I just, the edits I just made are now available to be viewed for anybody that has this link and has access to um, the DEQ um, organizational profile. Um, so you guys still won't be able to see it. Um, you would publish things openly. Um, I just have chosen to share it internally since I don't have approval to <laughs> share it externally. Um, and then I can view my published story. And there's all the updates that I made and the fun pictures I added and different things. And that's kind of how it looks. You can also, when you're editing the story, if you want to see what it looks like in different formats, you can go to preview and then it has this where if I pulled it up on a smartphone, this is what I would see. So you can make sure that your media is actually displaying the way you want it to on those different interfaces, which is really neat um, since we know that going from desktop to smartphone to tablet um, can sometimes distort things. And this just shows you how it's gonna be laid out, how somebody's gonna be able to pull it up on those different screens. So we use this quite a bit when I'm designing, when things are kind of in place, you don't maybe reference this as, as much, but um, it's really helpful to see, you know, if I didn't want this picture to be on top of this text, I wanted it to be within this text, maybe I would go back and change some settings and, and how it's placed in the main document. You can even rotate and see if you rotated your your phone, what it would look like. So really kind of a neat tool to be able to visualize it and not just expect it's going to look okay or have to pull it up on your phone after you publish it and realize that there's stuff that um, is not functioning that the, the way you want it to. So, okay. I'm going to pop into some... Um, finalized examples, I should say. So these are ones that we've worked on for the department. This is our harmful algal bloom uh, tracking monitoring story map. And so we have this linked on our website for folks to be able to go in and see what is out there for during the recreational season, what water bodies are under advisories or warnings or ones that we've received reports on, but are still getting investigated. And so um, you can add cool functions like um, this bar here, this navigational bar. So say I don't want to sit and scroll for miles and miles to go and find this section. I can immediately just pop down to the advisory section and see here are the advisories that were issued uh, for North Dakota during the 2024 season. Um, and you can kind of just bounce around using that. So like I said, you can scroll if you'd like to. Um, this one's going to look a little bit bare because we're outside of the recreational season, but this map um, is one of the tools that you can use in the free or the paid version where you can plot those points. So here we have little points plotted on all of the lakes that we received um, reports on this year and that were entered into a watch. Same with advisories. These are all of the water bodies that were listed as advisories. And then finally warnings. Here's all our, our ones that got a little bit stickier um this last season so and then you can always add other information content this is one of those um like scrolling functions where you can add some really cool mind you gross pictures <laughs> in this case but just find different ways to be able to display your your information because folks folks really like pictures they like visual learning um and this is one of those tools that allow that to happen Here's our harmful algal bloom signage. So folks can click on this and this is showing what to expect to see near water bodies. So um, kind of capitalizing on the information that we want them to be familiar with. And then you can give all your credits. So um, this is our story map where it was developed. If you had photos, you can attribute them to um, different sources or if you're working with specific landowners or partners, this is a great section to be able to highlight the folks that were in partnership with what you were doing. Um, same with, open this one. This is the 319 uh, non-point source program annual report that I was talking about we developed. And so we've done cool things where this is, this first part is just almost like a PowerPoint of showing photos of different areas, but giving some information um, 
we were able to map water quality uh, based on where our ambient monitoring network is. So all of the sites that we uh, sample throughout the year on a regular monthly basis, um, share some of that water quality data. We're able to highlight projects um, that were awarded from each year, projects that were completed. And then you can also embed maps that you've created in ArcGIS. So I created this web map um, and made it interactive so that all of our active projects, if I click on a project, it'll pop open um, a little box that says what the project is, who's responsible for it, um, it gives contact information for the coordinator who you would contact if you were interested in learning more or getting cost share for your practices, and then what the primary practices are that are funded through that program. So each one of these has its own um, listing, own person to contact. Um, so just a different way of, of displaying data um, and showcasing cool pictures from different projects. Here's all our INE ones. Um, information education, excuse me, that we've done. So once again, if you create some of these and it's got a lot of content like this one does, you would scroll for miles and miles and miles. So having this navigation tool on top is really beneficial. Um, we can highlight all of our requirements um, for the program and, and the different priori prioritizations that we've made throughout the years. And then once again, there's that acknowledgement of where we got the content from, who created the story map, what have you. So, and then another fun one that I just wanna share, oops. Um, is this is just an, uh, an example of one that the Nature Conservancy did. So there's just like a tiered story map where you can click into one of these and then it's got cool video interactive Stuff. This is, yeah, looks really neat when you can share videos as your editor. It's still got that navigation tool, but more used for fact sharing is kind of the, the basis of these story maps, um, which is really neat. So with that, um, I just had a quick question for the group at large. Um, would really like to know from you guys how you could potentially see story maps benefiting your agency. Um, and so if folks could drop into the chat their thoughts on this and kind of share, I'd like to spend just a few minutes maybe bouncing my, some ideas off one another, because um, I know I have a few and would just love to hear from everybody else how they how they think that story maps could be applicable to the work that you're doing. Dion mentioned workshop promotion, sites to view. Um, Billy mentioned highlighting their programs and tours that they do throughout the year. Awesome. Emily, maybe you talked about this, and I know I had to step away for a second, but with story maps, is this something that you embed into your, like, your website, or is it a separate link that you send to people? Sure, that's a great question. I did not talk about this. So, actually, one of my ideas is because these documents can either be standalone or they can be um, embedded into stuff. So, for example, I can pull up here. Um, on our DEQ webpage, I have embedded our non-point source story map into our actual webpage. So you can scroll through the whole document right here if you want to and navigate through the document straight from the webpage. Or it can be a complete standalone link. Um, and so I've actually talked to some folks about being able to utilize ArcGIS story maps as a replacement to a website. So you could put all of the content that you want. You could put contact information, um, pictures from different projects you have going on, um, all into a story map and just link, have a link for that associated with your organization in lieu of paying for a domain and having um, that additional cost if ArcGIS is something you're already paying for. So yeah, that's a great question, Hannah. Okay, and then my follow-up question, just because I know a lot of districts utilize Facebook, is there, I mean, of course, sharing out your link on Facebook, but is there other ways that you can 
utilize ArcGIS and Facebook? Pair them together at all? Um, that's a good question. So ArcMap or ArcGIS Story Maps is still in development. And so there's a lot of new things that are popping up every day where I could see potentially in the future there being some crossover between some of those media platforms a little bit more. To my knowledge right now, um, the most is just being able to share the link for folks to be able to access that and directly get to that information. Um, but hoping through time, we're gonna see more and more of that stuff. Any other comments regarding ways that we could use story maps to benefit agencies? Norris inputted into the chat, um, important to get information of the programs to the public, which I think that's a great point. And I should have highlighted that better at the beginning. That was a really big reason why we asked Emily to talk about this is soil conservation districts do such great work, uh, but we aren't always the best about tooting our own horn. And mm -hmm. so this is just a fun, creative way to share about the work that you're doing and engage people. Um, yeah, yeah, that's absolutely. Absolutely correct. It's, um, I'd kind of made mention to you could maybe look at replacing or supplementing a newsletter with an ArcGIS story map. Um, even had an idea that if your district rents equipment and you wanted to create a story map that had the showed pictures of the equipment you have to rent and you could list in there what the rental rates are for that, you could send people to that or link that on your web page um, for folks to be able to quickly go in and see what equipment you have available. Um, and then I also thought of like producer highlights. So if you have some farmers, some producers in your area that are doing really spectacular work um, and you want a platform to be able to kind of highlight that on, share pictures, share stories. Um, if you ever do video interviews, um, you could always share stuff like that in a story map. Um, as well as educational events. So definitely, um, I think certain maybe statewide events would really benefit from having a story map. You could share photos from a lot of different events or a lot of different areas and kind of showcase how um, people in different areas do things differently. So, Yeah, I was thinking about the tree award winners and just being able to highlight yeah. them in a unique way. Yeah, absolutely. Dion has a chat in the or question question in the chat um we don't have our own arc gis we use the program on the federal computer can this be done through that or is it a completely different program sure so this is through esri online um which you would have access to as long as you could get a hold of the subscription information for the ArcGIS desktop version you use. So if you're using, um, which it sounds like desktop, then NRCS probably has a subscription for that. And if they're willing to share or they can add you as an account onto their Esri online, then you'd be able to access that. Dion, does that answer your question? And in the case that they're not, you could always um, access it through the free version too. Okay. Yeah, I would probably have to confirm with the NRCS folks um, how they get their subscriptions, if it's something that's done office by office in-house or if it's a larger entity subscription, because that might be limiting to, um, what they allow you to access through the Esri Online stuff. Yeah, awesome. Um, keep plugging away here. So this is um, just some online resources and training. So I went through things pretty quick today. I wanted to leave time for questions. Um, didn't want to, to bore everyone to death with uh, just click demonstrations So try to just kind of brush through the stuff that's really notable highlights. But these are some links to resources. The Esri Academy is a free resource um, and they have a ton of different trainings for 
um, learning the Esri Online things like Story Maps. That's the one I have linked up top here. But you, any sort of ArcGIS training that you might be looking for, this is um, this is a really great uh, resource for that. And this is just kind of the general training link that you can you can go to. Um, the second one here, the North Dakota GIS Hub Data Portal. If you are an ArcGIS user and you're ever looking for shape files or layers to put into your data um, or put into your, your mapping that you're using, this is a really fantastic resource. It's all open source through the state of North Dakota. Um, let me get to that one. That you can find all sorts of different layers um, environmental, there we go. Usually I'm in this one. Water, if you're wanting to look at like watershed boundaries, you can grab those from here and easily download it and then just drop it into your ARC um, GIS desktop files or onto your Esri Online maps. Um, it's just something that um, is really, it's a really, wonderful resource. Like I said, all open source information and they have census information here, elevation, community, just about anything you could need. And if you don't find what you need in here, there is a whole department in the state um, designated to GIS um, resources. And so it's something that you can request certain data sets be made, um, which is really neat as well. Okay. This is the next one. This is the North Dakota Media Library. Um, once again, an open source. I believe all I have to do is sign up for an account. I'm not even logged in at this point in time, but if you wanted to find different pictures, say you're like me and you're absolutely horrible at taking pictures when you're out and about, but you just wanna be able to drop a picture into a um, PowerPoint or you're looking for pictures to kind of fill out your story map that are general, they don't have folks' faces, or if they do have folks' faces, they've already signed off and given permission that you're able to use them. Um, this is a really great website. You can just pop on in. Um, if you wanted to see a picture of the state capitol building with the Christmas tree, you can easily download um, that and utilize this for any presentations or what. They will have this North Dakota uh, be legendary watermark in the corner. Um, some of them, I will say when you select to download, I'll see here, um, you can request published assets, which means it doesn't have that watermark in it. So some, and I'm, I'm not sure what the criteria is, but some you can't, some you can only get with the watermark, but some allow you to download that don't have that watermark in it. And then you could just accredit it later, so. Really neat, all sorts of different types of content as far as pictures go. You can find just about anything in here is um, just general North Dakota pictures. Um, and then the last one I have here is if you are really interested in building ArcGIS story maps, um, they have a gallery here that just uh, can provide you some inspiration. I was clicking through here earlier and I found this one, which I thought was really super cute. Um, the little hero on the prairie and it's all about prairie dogs and talking about um, their interactions with the ecosystem. It's got some really cool mapping that they did. Um, this is all done within the actual story map itself. So it's kind of just showing the capabilities of what you can do. You can overlay, um, this is talking about like population, um, different types of risk for grasslands, talking about the different types of species that live in different areas. And then uh, you can share cool graphics. Um, this one I thought was really cool. So they layered in um, photos to show, here's the above ground ecosystem. And then you scroll through and it shows you the below ground ecosystem and um, all the friends that are hanging out. And they did different layers and different photo transitions to show um, that content in a really fun, engaging way. And here they have a audio of a black-tailed prairie dog if you want to hear one bark, having 
Um, I'm sure most folks who live in North Dakota have, but I'm sure this story map has hit a lot of people who maybe have never heard of prairie dog bark. So yeah, just some really neat tools um, and creative ideas. And that's why I think this web page, this project gallery is a really neat place to kind of just pick through and you know, look at, oh, they laid photos out this way. That looks really neat, visually appealing. That's really easy to read. I really like how they formatted that. Um, it's a really good resource. And they also look like they're beta-ing, beta excuse me, some templates for ArcGIS story map. And so that might be something that comes out um, sooner than later of you can just easily grab a template and throw your own pictures into it. And it requires pretty minimal to no building on your end. So um, hoping to see those sooner than later. But, all right. And then with that, that's all I had for today. Um, that's my contact information here with the state. Um, really appreciate the opportunity to talk about this. It's been a really fun learning experience, kind of something to mix up your day, or um, it could be a really good opportunity if you have some younger tech savvy people in the office that are looking for something to kind of make their own or a project to pursue. This is a really good, um, a really good option for them to be creative and, and share information at the same time. Uh, could also be something that you utilize or give projects to interns. If you guys ever have interns for, uh, maybe you use them part-time for tree planting and then when they're in the office, they're bored out of their minds. And this is something that you can uh, hand over to them and say, get creative. This is the content we want you to share, but we want you to, to make it something that's really visually appealing and, and neat, so. I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing and happy to take any questions if I missed one. Um, I I'm gonna go back here. There's a few questions. I was gonna jump in and say, I think whether it's an intern project or I know at least a lot of schools in Southwest North Dakota, they are having like these stream teams or these tech teams at their schools that are really, um, they'll stream the games, they do all sorts of tech savvy things. And so I could see that being a, also maybe a fun project, a way to partner with the local school. And mm -hmm. if those students would be willing to put together a story map for your SCD. Um, sure. But one of the questions Norris had was, would a subscription qualify as a 319 expense? Yeah, so um, I guess it just kind of depends on the content that you put into your proposal to receive 319 funding. So if there is a, a portion in your budget towards um, promotional, like if you do newsletters and you're including content for your 319 program in your newsletters, um, or you're utilizing that ArcGIS software to work directly with producers and create maps, and this is just another component that you want to utilize for advertising for the 319 project that you have or um, well, what have you. But uh, as long as it's tied to the, the project itself, the program itself, yes. Yep, it is an eligible expense. Okay, awesome. And then Shasta asked about putting the links in the chat. And I <laughs> we are planning on... Um, we'll send out the recording and then we'll include Emily's PowerPoint and those links that she included there and any additional um, resources that we come up with. I added in the chat, um, Emily showed those photos that were available through North Dakota Be Legendary. We also have some photos on the SCD Google resource drive that everybody is more than welcome to utilize there. Um, so just know that the, we'll be sharing out that information. Are there any other questions that people have? I apologize, I guess, if I flew through stuff a little bit quickly. Just once again, don't want to don't want to spend everybody's time just showing you things that you could click on because you can definitely do some of that exploring yourself. Um, just wanted to bring to light the capabilities of that program um, and really provide information on a, another resource, another tool for your toolbox that you could be utilizing at the district level and maybe supplementing or even replacing um, archaic things that aren't being upkept. I know websites can be really difficult for folks um, and this is definitely an option for replacing that, um, especially if your content is 
fairly tame for what you put on yours already. You know, it could be something that's very easily to, to log in, make a quick edit, publish it and move on. So. Wonderful. Wow. Happy to give you back 15 minutes of your day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, Emily. Like I said, we'll include her information when we send up the follow-up email. And so if you have any questions that pop up, I always tell people that I'm the worst. I think of my questions 12 to 24 hours after a presentation is done. And I'm like, oh, I wish I would have asked Emily this question. But I know that she's more than happy to take the time to visit with folks. So thank you again so much, Emily. And thank you, everyone. I hope you all have a great rest of your week and stay warm. A couple housekeeping items before I totally let you go. Next Wednesday, correct, Amber, we have our open coffee, coffee talk, open Q&A. And so this is just a time if there are questions that you have, we don't have a set schedule or agenda or anything like that. It's just 30 minutes where people can hop on if there are things that you are dealing on with in your districts and you're just wanting to hear, you know, what are other districts doing for winter programming or how do they manage their no-till drill? Those are just a couple questions that we've covered in the past. And so please feel free to jump on there. We would appreciate it. And otherwise, hopefully we'll be seeing quite a few of you at convention next week.